In ten thousand years, inside a bubble, I stepped out one day to find it was trouble. There comes a time when the search for truth takes over. Words no longer satisfy me, and talk seems cheap, as they say, and solutions shallow. Like my pristine suburban landscape, it's all just show. And no matter how hard I try to ignore it, I have this nagging feeling inside that something is missing, that there's more to the story, that there's more to my life. I called your name from the depths of the sea. I've always been a searcher, a cynic even, finding it easier to reject every solution rather than to embrace the unknown. But I think every cynic, deep down, longs to be wrong. At least I do. But to be wrong, I need to know, know the truth, see the truth, wherever the truth exists, wherever the road might take me. My search has brought me here to Haiti, but I wasn't ready for the craziness here. Beyond the oppressive sun and the noise, the chaos and desperation are around every corner. It takes your breath away, but not in the good sense. And perhaps that's just as well. The smell of real poverty is often worse than the sight of it, and this country is no exception. Haiti is always known suffering. A series of corrupt leaders, floods. Hurricanes, violence, and neglect have left the people here with nothing. Everything is different here. As we travel around in this oppressive heat, I see people everywhere. They look deep into my eyes with each gaze out my window. I wonder what they think. Even the gates, locks, and fences mean something different here. They speak of real danger. It's a far cry from the gated communities and fenced yards I'm used to, keeping the poodles in and the raccoons out. Their existence is so fragile here; it seems that even survival is a basic daily quest. My mind is spinning already. I have so many questions, but only a few days to find the answers. So, I have enlisted the services of Johnny, a translator and guide, in the hopes that he will shed some light on life here in Port-au-Prince. We're on the roof of Compassion Project here in Salino. This is called Salino. Salino. I've heard、indeed. about Salino as being one of the most impoverished places in Port-au-Prince. Is, yes, that, is that true? Yes, indeed. You are at the very core of the project here, Project Haiti Compassion's 396. Yeah. And now the, the surrounding area. You were saying about a third of a mile is called Salino. And yes. It really is a slum. Yes. A third of a mile around here. As you look at Solino, right? Yes. Some of the worst poverty. Now, I've read a lot about、um, Restavec. Can you tell me a little bit about how that is working and or whether it's working? The word Restavec is from a French connotation meaning to stay with. So Restavec in our cultural setting means that we have the children from the rural area、mm -hmm. who merge, who came to Port-au-Prince, sent by the families、right. to stay with other family more fortunate. For more opportunity for a better future,、right. but it's the opposite. When they come here, they don't have a place to really sleep. They don't have a bed they call their own. They are not fed properly. They are not having the right to educations. They don't even have the right to play as children.、Hmm. The worst of it, some of our girls, most of the time, they are sexually and physically abused. They are beaten. They are forced to work, and there is no payment for that.、Mm. This is Restavec. This is what you call Restavec, a child enslaved.、Mm. That's the way it is here.、Right. Right. And what age are these? Oh, the age、kids? group will vary, even from、uh, early childhood. Let's say from five, six. 
Some of them, they are orphans of parents. Some of them, the family cannot afford to raise them or they do not want them. So for either reasons, they are here and part of prince to be enslaved. And compassion is right here in this in this place, trying to fight that and trying to give these these kids some hope and education and and that kind of thing here. That's right. Compassion is here to make the change, to bring that transformations of the attitude, because those children in domesticity or in slave or rest of it, if they are in the program, oh, this is what you call a respite. Because by coming into this program, they have a right to be educated, they have a right to a meal, they can wear a uniform, they even have the freedom to play, which they cannot have if they were not part of this program. Wow. I just can't, I just can't imagine it. I just, wow. I think of my own kids, you know? Well, that's, that's, that's a lifestyle in Haiti. It's common. It's not just in Solino, we have many other areas. If you'd go to, you'll find that phenomenon. Restavec is everywhere in Haiti. The tragedy of parents sending their kids for hope. Well, what's the use of coming here if I can't experience the real story? It's one thing to talk of Solino and Restavec from the protection of the project, but outside the compound is another story. Kidnapping and murder are common here, and although it's a bit safer at the moment, the sense of present danger is overwhelming. It hits me like a slap at every corner, in the narrow alleyways and small shack houses. I know that beneath this eerie calm, things are very unsettled, and that situations can change in a heartbeat. It's also pretty sickening. Sewage runs between the houses, which are stacked closely together. It smells, it's dirty, and there's nowhere to go for a bit of escape. The children remind me of my own. My heart goes out to them. Covering their faces in fear and shame, carrying more gallons of water on their heads than their ears should be able to, for miles, at least twice a day. The sheer numbers mask the real problem. They are slaves. It's become so culturally acceptable that no one even notices anymore. I need to hear their stories. I need to experience just a fraction of their pain. So I've asked to speak with a Restavec child. I need the answers. I need to hear the truth. <laughs> 